Welcome back to the Savvy Campers. Today we have a little bit of education day and we're going to talk about how much solar do you need on your travel trailer, RV, camper, whatever you want to use solar for. But we're gonna talk about how much you need to uh, basically keep your batteries full. Uh, if you're new to the channel, uh, the Savvy Campers, we have a website and we have a channel and we talk about all things RV, camping, travel trailers, um, all sorts of issues, solutions, troubleshooting, as well as uh, reviews on products that we buy and use. So if you want to learn more, uh, you can go to thesavvycampers.com or you could uh, find the link in the description or just subscribe to the channel. So let's get started and talk about uh, how much solar you need. So the first uh, step in figuring out how much solar you need is you have to first determine your load. And your load is basically determined by how much energy you use. So um, that can be determined uh, basically in three ways. One, you can use a watt meter, uh, such as a kilowatt uh, is the brand name of the product, and you basically plug in everything that you need and it'll tell you how much power it uses. Um, a second is some of the new surge protectors um, on the market, and I'll have one linked in the description, are Bluetooth, so you can actually have an app on your phone and it will tell you how much load you have. Um, and then another one is if you already have a solar system, which um, obviously you don't because you're watching this video, but on our solar system, it'll actually tell us what our load is through our app, through our phone. So anyways, those are a couple ways to figure out the exact numbers. Uh, some other ways are you can ballpark it. So go camping, don't plug in, don't use the generator, see how many days you'll last. Just act normal, use your toilet, use your fan, use your lights, act normal. And basically you can determine how many days you'll last um, up until you hit about 50% battery life. So if it takes two days to get to 50%, then you'll know, okay, I can last two days or if it takes four days and we'll get into that a little later. The third way to determine is basically just calculate it out. I'll have a handy calculator in the description as well. And you can just plug in items that you have in your travel trailer. You have four lights that you'll run for an hour a day and you'll have a, a furnace that you'll run for 20 minutes a day and you'll have a refrigerator and you'll have a smoke detector. Um, so you can just plug in those items and it'll give you somewhat of a good estimate. So most of the ways, um, like using the watt meter, using your solar system, or using your surge protector, those are kind of exact. So we're gonna talk about just ballparking it. So let's say you have two batteries, and there's the terminals. So we've got your terminals, you've got 100 amp hour, Hundred amp, 200 amp hour batteries, um, and those are those are wired together so that you theoretically have 200 amp hours of energy. Well, with um, lead acid batteries, unless you have a lithium battery, they will only you can only discharge a certain percentage. So if you have a lithium battery, you can discharge to about. Uh, you can discharge about 80% usable, so have about 20% left. But on a lead acid, really 50%, maybe even a little higher, uh, might be the max. So if you discharge to 50% to keep your battery safe, if you just charge, discharge more, you'll permanently damage your batteries. But So if you can only discharge to 50%, that gives you 100 amp hours of use, right there. Um, so let's say you are camping and this takes you two days to burn through. Then you'll know, okay, I use 50 amp hours a day. Or let's say it takes four days to burn through and then you're at 50%. And so then that would be 25 amp hours a day. So we'll do two days and four days, okay? Um, so looking into solar kits, so if you have a solar, one uh, solar panel, typically they're 100 watt panels, 
a solar panel will put out about 30 amp hours a day. Um, and that's based on about five hours of peak sunlight if you're parked in the direct sun. Now if you're parked, and we've noticed this when we have our trailer out, if you've got a little le uh, branch over your solar or you're parked in the shade for part of the day, you won't get 30 amp hours per solar panel per day. But um, let's say you're parked in the middle of an opening and you have five peak peak um, hours of sunlight. So that 100 watt panel will put out about six amp hours or six amps per hour. So that gives us the 30 hours. So um, if you have one solar panel at 30 amp hours of replenishing your batteries per day, if you are at 25 amp hours of usage a day, you can get by with one solar panel. If you're at 50, you'll replenish 30, but you'll still be down 20. So at the end of five days, you'll be done. So then you would want two panels, which would give you 60 amp hours. So then the 60 amp hours would replenish at more than enough rate to replenish your 50 amp hours a day. In our usage and it's me, my wife, my daughter. We use the camper, we use our shower, we use lights, we use basically everything, radio, put the awning out, and we ha went with a 200 watt system, which is two 100 watt solar panels, and that has been enough for us. In some situations where we go and we do have shade from trees, it's not enough, and we, uh, if we're boondocking, we always have our generator typically anyways, because um, we've been forced to use that as well. The good thing is uh, with the solar, like for example, we go to Glacier National Park and we camp for, uh, I think last year we were uh, 12 or 13 nights. And so that's a lot of time to be away from uh, 110 volt power to recharge. And we had our solar on and we, um, it replenished us, but just not enough to not use the generator, but it was nice not to have to run the generator every single day because typically when we camp early season and we have the heater going and we have all, all of our stuff going and we're charging our phones and iPads, we're running the generator every day to keep up. Um, with the solar, we ran it probably every two to three days. Um, just to make sure that we didn't run out of power in the middle of the night and then we were stuck without heat. Let's look at, so this is a lead acid scenario. So let's look at if we have a lithium battery scenario. Um, so let's say you have two lithium batteries and they're 100 amp hours each. And they're connected together. So theoretically you have 200 amp hours of lithium lithium and then lead acid so you've got 200 amp hours but on a lithium you can use 80 percent of that power so 80 percent of each battery would be 80 amp hours so you'd have a total of 160 amp hours if you have lithium so the same if you're looking at the same battery for lead acid versus lithium 100 amp hour batteries, two of them, you have a lot more energy that you can get out of lithium than you can with your lead acid. Um, you have 60 more amp hours that you could draw out. Um, so when you're looking at this situation, um, it would be essentially the same. Um, you need to replenish the same amount of power, but you can go longer without replenishing. So if you use, um, let's say 20 amp hours or 50 amp hours a day, let's say you use 50 amp hours, you would theoretically go about three days and a little bit longer versus your two days with lead acid. But if you're replenishing it, you would replenish it on your lithium. And you, let's say you couldn't replenish that full 50 amp hours a day, it, you could last longer than if you had just the lead 
acid batteries. So lithium is a good thing to upgrade to. Uh, they're getting cheaper. Batteries used to be about 1200 bucks a piece. Now I just saw that they were down to about seven, uh, six to 700 bucks a piece for a 100 amp hour battery, um, which is a great deal um, compared to, uh, you know, a lithium will last longer when you're out, but it'll also last longer in how many charge cycles you can have and how many years you'll have the battery um, than the lead acid. So it might make sense versus buying, you know, two times a lead acid. You could buy one time a lithium, but then actually have a lot more power when you're out camping. So to finish up, I wanna give you a few tips on how to conserve your battery power. Um, let's say you are in this scenario, and let's say you do have some solar, um, we still wanna conserve as much battery as we can. So the first item you can do is switch all of your lights to LEDs, and LEDs will use just a fraction of the power that a normal incandescent light will use. So switch to LEDs, number one. Number two, you'll wanna turn off everything when not in use. I have some friends that always leave their water pump switch on, they'll leave their water heater on all the time, things like that, and you'll wanna make sure if you're boondocking and relying on your solar system or just relying on boondocking with no solar, you'll want to make sure every switch and everything is turned off because there's phantom power that comes out of leaving your water pump on and leaving your water heater on. Even though it's not running, it's using power. The third tip would be to add insulation and seal up any air leaks that you can. So around wheel wells, around windows, around pass-through storage that are adjacent to, let's say, your bed or your bathroom, you'll wanna insulate those the best that you can because that air will come into your trailer and it will make it cold. So insulate them, it's not hard, it's not expensive. Get a can, a can of foam insulation and a four by eight sheet of uh, closed cell foam, one inch, and that will go a long ways in your trailer. The last tidbit I will leave you with is when you're setting up your trailer, uh, before you disconnect your uh, umbilical cord essentially from your truck, put your tongue jack down and put your slide outs out. That will take power from your truck to use to put your, use your tongue jack motor and use your slide out motors um, so that you don't use your battery power for that. And it might save a little bit, but at least you're putting that on your truck versus your batteries. Uh, so if you are boondocking for three, four days with no way to get solar or generator, at least it'll help you last that little bit longer. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope this made as much sense as I could make it for how much solar you need in your RV. So you really just have to figure out what your usage is and um, then figure out how many solar panels you'll need. Uh, probably a, a two-piece kit, so 200 watts will be enough for most people. A lot of people like the briefcase models just because they're portable. You don't have to drill in your roof and you can get 100, 200 watts and move them around in the sun so that's convenient and you'll get a little more charge from that than having them roof mounted. Um, but anyways, make sure to subscribe to the channel, like this video if it's any at all helpful and we'll see you in the next one. So happy camping.